Kimmy Schmidt spec script. Cold open. Fade in. Interior. Kimmy's apartment. Day. Kimmy and Titus are doing a bit of spring cleaning. Kimmy is sorting through a box of old things. Titus, look at this. A year ago, I didn't own anything. Now I have a whole box full of stuff I don't need anymore, but I also can't make myself throw away. Looking through the items in the box. My failed GED test, the VHS of Splash. I'll take that. Oh, uh, a love doodle from Dong in my margin of my old GED notebook. Wait a second. A love doodle from Dong? Oh, uh, how did I not see this? She holds the notebook up and reads it. Dong hearts Kimmy. Oh, why does this still make me sad? Titus has put Splash in the VCR and is holding up the remote, about to start watching. He realizes Kimmy is sad and reaches over, stroking her head with the remote. I'm being supportive. <laughs> After spending 15 years in a bunker and having to eat my first boyfriend, I can't have pinto beans that dot me for Gretchen, this should be easy. Girl, you did not just say that you thought it should be easy. That bunker doesn't give you a free pass on accumulating baggage, Kim Burton. That box you're looking through? Yeah? It represents ten brain boxes full of emotional stuff. Just from one year of adult life. So every year I get more of this stuff? How do I get rid of it? If I knew, would I be wearing this kimono for the third day in a row? Kimmy's phone dings. It's a text from Jacqueline that says, 911, come now. I gotta go. Jacqueline must have gotten 911 of something. What? No, Kimmy, I need you. I texted Mike at work and he hasn't responded. And I finished my Beyonce birdhouse yesterday. You finished Beyonce? Yes. And now I'm bored. Stay and watch Splash with me. I'm needy. I can't. I need a break from all these boxes anyway. Let me know if any famous birds stop by, though. Titus gives Kimmy a look. Titus. Tweety Bird, Toucan Sam, Woodstock, Zazu from The Lion King, The Roadrunner, The Bird on the Twitter logo. Kimmy rips off the doodle, puts it in her pocket, and heads for the door. Woody Woodpecker, Cornelius Rooster, <laughs> I could go on forever, Titus. Kimmy exits. Titus holds up the remote and starts the movie. Kimmy re-enters. Titus pauses the movie. The Angry Bird from Angry Birds, Homer Pigeon, the one-legged pigeon that stole my french fries that one time. <laughs> See? Kimmy exits. Titus holds up the remote and starts the movie. Kimmy re-enters. Titus sighs and pauses the movie. What now? Donald Duck? No. You would never find a duck at an inner city bird feeder. I was gonna say that bird that landed on Bernie Sanders' podium. She exits. But that bird looks like a normal bird. How will I recognize him slash her? Titus holds up the remote, waiting for Kimmy to interrupt him again. Beat. He starts the movie. A small bird lands in the windowsill, catching Titus' attention. He pauses the movie. Where do I know you from? And it pulled open. Act 1, fade in. Interior, hallway of Jacqueline's apartment building, day. Kimmy walks up to Jacqueline's door. Inside, we hear the voices of Jacqueline and Russ arguing. Kimmy leans up against the door to listen. If you really love me, you wouldn't care about his wedding. If you really love me, you would be supporting my plan to take Julian down. If that's the criteria, then I guess I don't really love you. And I don't really love you. I have to get to work. Then go. Kimmy does an awkward shuffle at the door, not sure if she should run or just step out of the way. The door flies open and Russ storms out. Kimmy! Hello. Sorry I had to hear that. He continues to walk away. <laughs> hear what? The door is basically soundproof. Technology works! Kimmy shakes off the interaction and enters Jacqueline's apartment. Jacqueline is gazing out the window. Did you and Russ just exchange 911 mean words? Julian's getting married to that tramp! I just got the invitation. It's going to be on a blimp at the Empire State Building's historical blimp docking station. He's only doing that because I wanted a blimp wedding. Now, pardon my French, but he is a total slop bucket. Right. Which is why I came up with an amazing plan to take him down. But Russ refused to participate. And now he wants nothing to do with me. Oh, I thought you guys were the perfect couple. Like Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. Together forever. I know how these things work, Kimmy. Russ and I are done. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss White. If it makes you feel any better, I found a dead cockroach in my shoe this morning. She takes a step. And crunch. Another one? Ah. Oh. Jacqueline crawls down on the floor. Oh, Kimmy, why does the universe hate me? Is it because of that year I used a dead lady's gym membership? Because I honestly didn't know for the first six months. Miss White, you hit rock bottom before and you survived, right? Jacqueline sits up with an epiphany. As weird as it feels to say this, you're brilliant, Kimmy!
cut to Kimmy, not sure if she should be flattered or offended. If I rose from the ashes after my divorce, I can do it again! It's perfect. I'll skip over the bad stuff and go straight to the part where I'm living my best life. You can do that? Oh, that would have been nice to know before the bunker. First step to feeling great is getting a blowjob. Kimmy looks confused. Cut two. Exterior. Blowjob bar. Hair salon. Light dry bar. Day. Oh, <laughs> okay. Kimmy and Jacqueline walk in. Cut to exterior blowjob bar. A little later, Kimmy and Jacqueline walk out looking more fabulous. Now that I'm feeling like my best self, it's time to put my best self on the market. Cut to interior Jacqueline's apartment. A little later, Kimmy and Jacqueline are staring at Jacqueline's computer. Online dating. Oh, I knew you were classing a swipe, but this, oh, this is another level. Close up of computer screen. Jacqueline's completed profile. Jacqueline's photo was weird and provocative. A skillless selfie. Time to watch the matches roll in. Do you still need me? I'd say, but Titus and I are cleaning our apartment today. I mean, I'm cleaning and Titus is untangling his wigs. Jacqueline, absorbed in the computer, isn't listening. Kimmy shrugs and exits, her shoe crunching as she walks. Cut to interior Lillian's apartment day. Lillian is reading a newspaper with headlines, Subway Pooper Strikes Again, when she hears a rustling sound. She listens, but it stops. She goes back to the reading. The rustling sound returns. She listens, but it stops once again. She returns to her reading, frustrated, and when the rustling starts again, she puts down the paper and stands up. Show yourself! She sees a rat peering out from behind a table. It's holding a ring in its mouth. Hey, my old wedding ring! Cut to the rat, nose twitching. Back to Lillian. What difference does it make? I wasn't using it. Cut to rat, it looks around. Listen, I was gonna pawn it eventually. I was just waiting till I felt ready. The rat scurries off. Hey, you come back here! The rat is gone. Oh, you're gonna be sorry you did that, Ethel Vermin. And it's none of your business what I do with my stuff. Cut to interior Jacqueline's apartment day. Close up on Jacqueline's computer, she's browsing the options of men on lonelyandrich.com. We see the profile of a handsome man and Jacqueline's face as she approves of him. She clicks the match button, only to be met with a giant red X. Not a match. Ha, huh. okay. Cut to the computer screen. A new profile pops up and she clicks match, giant red X. Not a match. What? Why? More frantically, she looks at a man's profile, clicks match, and gets the red X. Not a match. Ah! Cut to interior, Kimmy's apartment, day. Titus is sitting on the couch, stroking his own imaginary hair. Kimmy enters, startling him. Do you know how long it took me to meditate myself into believing I was Daryl Hannah just now? Titus, you haven't done any cleaning since I left. Close up on disgusting pile of tangled wigs, which moves a little. They both flinch. Where have you been, anyway? I was helping Jacqueline do online dating. Online dating? I knew that bitch was classy, but that's another level. Kimmy's phone dings, a text from Jacqueline. Except she's not getting any matches. Oh, I'm gonna have to go over there and draw a unibrow on my face again. Oh, Kimmy, I'm upset. Mikey still hasn't texted me back. So? I'm worried. I've been burned before, and I don't mean by that sexual branding iron. I mean emotionally. Titus, Mikey isn't gonna dump you, get stuck in a green card marriage, and get deported after doing it with you one time. He's probably just at work. But what if he does? Not texting is always the beginning of the end. Titus, I can't help two people live their best lives. I'm not Oprah. But you love bread. I know. I have bread every day. I already promised Jacqueline, unless. Unless? Do you have a plan? Is it stupid? Can I help? I take back my offer if I have to go anywhere or do anything. I'm going to create my own online dating profile. Justin Kimberlake! How on earth is that supposed to help either of us? I'm not my own dating profile, Titus. A fake one. To match with Jacqueline. You can help me. Which will take your mind off Mikey, and I give Jacqueline tons of compliments. She'll have to feel good about herself. People will believe anything they read on the internet. Ooh, a new study shows egg salad has negative calories. What? No wonder I can eat so much of it. Kimmy and Titus exit, Titus tossing his imaginary mermaid hair as he goes. Cut to interior, Jacqueline's apartment, day. Jacqueline is sitting at her computer with her head on the desk. One new match. Jacqueline sits up, her mascara is running, she's a hot desperate mess. A match! 
Close up on the screen, it's a hot guy with a stock photo watermark. Reginald Noname. Interest include women's hair products, not being outside, and blip travel. Those are some of my favorite things too. Ding, a message pops up on the screen. A message? It's from Reginald. She opens the message. Hi, Jacqueline. Your picture is beautiful. What do I write back? Should I wait to make it seem like I'm not desperate? But I am desperate! Cut to interior library at the same time. Kimmy and Titus are sharing the computer. What's she saying? Nothing yet. She must be typing something really important. Close up on screen. Three typing dots are up on Jacqueline's end of the chat. They disappear and reappear a few times, which Kimmy reacts to. Finally, the computer dings. <gasps> she responded! Thank you. You're not so bad yourself, Mr. Nodame. Ooh, that rich lady be flirting. Don't get in too deep, Kimmy Neutron. I'm just going to give her a few more compliments. Thank you. You also seem to be smart and funny and kind. A total catch. Any man would be lucky to have you. Not that you need a man because you're a strong woman on your own. She nods with approval and hits send. Oh, please. What kind of white bullshit is that? Even she isn't going to fall for that positive. Computer D. She responded. It, it says, oh, I don't even know what half this stuff means. What's a finger bang? This? Uh -oh. Bang? Titus reads the message. Uh-oh, Kimmy. She wants the D. What's the D? Titus whispers it to Kimmy. I don't even have one of those. The computer dings again. She reads. She wants to meet. Titus, what do I do? She turns to Titus. He's eating chips and looks at her like he just noticed she was talking to him. Okay, Kimmy, think about Dong. If I was Miss White and Dong was me, what would I want him to say? Meet me at 8 o'clock at Cafe Leo. I'm not married and I think I would be great to do it with. She hits send. Beat. I hope that wasn't too racy. Wait, what just happened? I know. This bag was just full a second ago. No, Titus. I just set up a date with Jacqueline as Reginald <gasps> for tonight. That's gasps. That's worse than my thing. Why did I do that? Ugh, this is stupid doodle. I thought I was over it, but I guess I'm not. I can't think clearly when Dong is involved. Preach. Titus, I need a plan, and fast. I can't let her slow up for any imaginary date. Think, Kimmy. W-W-O-D. What would Oprah do? Hold the phone. Titus has an idea. He leans toward the computer screen. Kimmy is holding her phone up, confused. Cut to interior, Lillian's apartment, later. Lillian holds a hammer and is laying pieces of cheese all over her living room floor. Come on, little rat. I just want to talk to you. I'm not going to hit you with this hammer. She listens for a response. Oh, well, guess it's time for my nap. She feigns a big yawn, lays down on the couch, and places a block of cheese on her chest. Whatever you do, don't eat this cheese I'm leaving on my chest. She lays there with her eyes closed. We hear a rustling, and she opens one eye. She tightens her grip on the hammer. The rat emerges, still holding the wedding ring. It comes towards her and sniffs the cheese. She pops up to kill the rat, and he runs away. Ah, sneaky son of a bitch. She takes a bite of cheese and runs off with a new plan in mind. End of Act 1. Act 2. Interior, library, later. Kimmy and Titus are still sharing the computer. Close up on the screen, which shows an actress submission website called thebackdoor.com. So that's it? I just post this listing and actors will apply to play the part of Jacqueline's date? That's right. Even though this isn't a real play and we're not offering them any money? Sadly, oh, yes. Holy cow, actors are generous. The computer dings. Bazinga. Cut to screen. Handsome, artsy-looking actor in his early 40s. Will Simon. I know him! We auditioned for a Campbell Soup commercial together. Incredible spoon work. He has this look in his eyes like a crazy person. Like Gary Busey or that guy on the corner who keeps getting pepper sprayed. Crazy eyes are the mark of a great actor, Kimmy. His eyes are a little too wide. So, you think he's the one? Definitely! I had my eye on him during my being attracted to straight men phase. A notable period which spanned from always to always. Okay, Will Simon, get ready for a finger-banging good fake date. She holds each hand like a gun and pretends to shoot. <laughs> Music plays the start of a montage. Cut to interior <coughs> Kimmy's apartment later. Kimmy and Titus examine Will. Titus has a flirtatious air. Will is wearing a scarf and a newsboy cap. Titus shakes his head and removes the cap. 
handing Will a comb. As Titus and Will begin working on outfits, we focus on Kimmy, who secretly pulls out her doodle from Dong and looks at it. Cut to interior Jacqueline's apartment, early evening. Jacqueline is doing her makeup in the mirror and reaches into a drawer to get her mascara. In the drawer, she sees a metal retainer that has Rust handwritten on it. She picks it up and looks at it sadly. Cut to interior Lillian's apartment, early evening. Lillian is holding a hammer and frantically shuffling through a closet, looking for the rat. In a box, she discovers some old wedding photos and a handgun. She looks at them nostalgically. <laughs> Cut to interior Kimmy's apartment, evening. <clears throat> Music ends. Will is ready for the date. He looks sharp. So what is it exactly that's driving my character? A car. It's actor talk, Kimmy. He wants to know what Reginald No Name's motivation is. Will, Reginald is looking for love, but not really. Sweet, and that's, that's right in my wheelhouse. Will, whatever you do, do not go home with Jacqueline. She may want the D. So I'm supposed to not give her the D? Exactly. She'll get too attached. She's clinging like a wet piece of hair, and I'm the drain she's going to clog up once you wash her off you. Ha! Huh. Whoa, metaphor. She high-fives herself. Don't worry, I'm a pro. I'm almost through level three of improv at the, at the pit. I actually have my class show next week. Shh! Titus, do you have the walkie-talkies? Titus pulls out two walkie-talkies. <clears throat> Where did you get these, anyway? Cut two. Exterior, Harlem Stoop, earlier that day. Titus pretends to look at his phone as he watches two children playing with walkie-talkies. They leave their walkie-talkies on the stoop when an ice cream truck pulls up. Titus steals the walkie-talkies and hightails it out, strutting. Cut to interior, Kimmy's apartment, present. I found them. I thought they'd be perfect for this activity. I definitely didn't get them so I could tell you to bring me string cheese in bed. Kimmy holds up the walkie-talkie. Luke, I am your father. Could you at least warn me before you reveal a spoiler? He takes Kimmy's walkie-talkie. Now you try. We'll test his walkie-talkie. Let us not to the marriage of true minds admit impediment. Girl, bye. <laughs> Takes Will's walkie-talkie. Cut to interior car evening. Jacqueline gets in an Uber on the way to her date. Cafe Leo on 81st and Amsterdam. I'm reading a date from the internet. Congratulations. Welcome to the 21st century. Jacqueline looks mildly deflated. She picks up <coughs> her phone and calls Kimmy. Cut to exit. Cafe Leo evening. Kimmy, Titus, and Will are walking up to the restaurant. Kimmy's phone rings. We intercut between Jacqueline in her Uber and Kimmy on the street. Hi, Miss White. What's up? I'm asking because I don't already know. Kimmy, I'm on my way to a date. I've got a perfect match. Russ can suck a bag of D's. And by D's, I of course mean dicks. Jacqueline, listen. You don't have to go through with this if you don't want to. If you think I'm going to sit around feeling sorry for myself on my own time, you can forget it. That's why I pay my pity therapist for. But I... Sorry, Kimmy. I have to run. I'm pulling up to the restaurant. She hangs up. We see Jacqueline's cab pull up in front, and Jacqueline exits, wearing a sultry black dress. Kimmy, Titus, and Will duck behind a trash can. There she is. She is fine. She's better than fine, Will. She's really pretty. That's what fine means. You mean code? Awesome. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't turn this off. Question. Do I get EMC points for this? I'm only 10 points away from my equity card, so... What part of this experience reads equity to you? Get it. Will nods and heads inside. Kimmy and Titus duck further behind the trash can. We watch from their point of view as Will and Jacqueline say hello. Jacqueline flips her hair seductively and laughs at something Will says. Cut to interior, Cafe Leo, evening. Jacqueline and Will are sitting at a table. Jacqueline is fiddling with the top of her dress suddenly making it more revealing, and Will is watching with a lot of interest. We intercut between Jacqueline and Will inside and Titus and Kimmy on the street. So, where are you from originally, Reginald? Will looks lost for a moment. We see a close-up of his hand on the walkie-talkie, pushing the talk button. Uh, where am I from originally? Um, I'm from <laughs> Sea World! Kimmy smacks her on the forehead. Sea World? Sea World? Yes! People can be from there. I was born into a seal training family, and I was the best, but then I moved to land, and now I breed horses, fancy horses with golden hooves. I'm from there. I was born into a seal training family, but now I'm on land, and I breed horses. Uh, fancy horses with golden hooves. Golden hooves? Sounds expensive. This is like a rock. 
So hard. Reginald, we're both rich people. Why haven't we met before? Why haven't we met before, you say? Can we and Titus look at each other? I keep a low profile. One must when one has so many satchels of money in the old vault as I do. I keep a low profile. One must when one has satchels of money in an old vault. I am private, and uh, I just have a lot of money. Kimmy nods in approval. So why are we out here in public when we could be somewhere much more private? Kimmy looks to Titus, who is looking at his phone. Titus, what are you doing? Titus, what are you doing? What? Uh, sorry, uh, nothing. I'm sorry if I'm staring. I just enjoy the wonderful view. She pours a little bit of wine on herself. Oh, I'm all wet. Titus looks up at Kimmy. Mikey finally responded to me. Pumpkin, I thought you hated me. Be quiet. Be quiet. Oh, am I moaning too loud? I'm sorry, I'm just so wet. Oh, should I clean it up or just get wetter? Kimmy hears this and focuses her attention back on the walkie-talkie. Don't get wetter. Clean it up. Get the lady a napkin. Will looks conflicted. Then, get wetter. Jacqueline pours more wine on herself. They're both very turned on. We see Kimmy through the window, shouting into the walkie-talkie. <laughs> Titus is in the background on the phone. We hear the sounds of walkie-talkie, no distinguishable words. What's that sound? I'm sure it's nothing. We see a close-up of Will's hand turning the knob on the walkie-talkie to off. We focus back on Kimmy and Titus on the street. Uh, you know I love you too. See you soon. Bye! Titus is all moony over Mikey. Kimmy is pissed and turns away from the window. Well, Blackhawk went rogue. What are you talking about, Kim Chi? Who's Blackhawk? It's our code name for Will. Oh, I didn't know we had code names. What's mine? Chicken tender. Titus gives her a look. But enough. Look at them. They look through the window at Jacqueline and Will, who are kissing and pouring wine on each other. <laughs> She's the one who taught me that wine is for drinking, not cleaning stuff. On the bright side, Mikey was just at work. His phone died. I told you. You never listen to me, chicken tender. I guess I've been hurt so many times that I panicked. That's my emotional brain box opening up. Sometimes you just have to deal with stuff inside before you can put it away again. Titus starts to leave. Titus? Good luck, Kimiana Jones. He leaves. Kimmy sees Jacqueline and Will are exiting the restaurant together. They stop and kiss on the sidewalk. Way too much tongue. Kimmy runs up to Jacqueline and Will. Stop! I've got a gun! What? I don't have a gun. I don't know why I said that. Kimmy, what are you doing here? This isn't a real date, Miss White. And that's not Reginald No Name. It's Will Simon. He's a non-equity actor that I hired to come and meet you because I created that account on LonelyAndRich.com. Rich, Reginald No Name isn't real. What about the horses? The golden hooves? Uh, that was called acting. I'm trained in the Meisner technique. And I may not be rich, Jacqueline, but I still think what we have here is pretty special. You stop! Fair enough. Kimmy motions to him. Just go. He does. Miss White, I have absolutely nothing to say to you, mole woman. Kimmy casts. <gasps> mole person! Wait, that's not what I hate about that. I'm going home. She pulls out her phone to hail an Uber. Kimmy's phone dates. Oh, for God's sake. She holds up her phone. Kimmy is her truck. <laughs> Cut to interior Lillian's apartment evening. Lillian looks through the old box of photos she found. We focus on a photo of her and Roland, her dead husband. She hears rustling. I give up. You can stop taunting me now. The rat peers out at her from the doorway and starts to come towards her with the ring. What do you want me to say? I don't got a right to be upset about losing my ring because I shot my husband Roland and that's why he's not around? The rat wiggles its nose. Fine. I don't got a right to be upset about losing my ring because I shot my husband Roland and that's why he's not around. The rat wiggles its nose again. Losing that ring feels like I'm losing Roland all over again. So what if it was my fault? I still got feelings. The rat looks at her. Just keep it. Use it to feed your little rat family. I got all my memories up here. The rat scurries off. Lillian leans back holding a photo to her chest. Cut to a tear. Kimmy's Uber later. Kimmy is driving. Jacqueline is in the back seat. Can you at least let me explain? I don't believe it's customary for one's driver to speak out of term in such a personal manner. I know what I did was wrong, Miss White, but I really was trying to help you learn how special you are. Like Big Bird from Sesame Street. Note to self, I 
Big Bird to famous bird list. Excuse me, driver. Is there some sort of partition I could put up? Miss White, I was trying to be your Big Bird. And the lesson of the day was the letter V for... Vagina. <laughs> Very special. Jacqueline nods like that's what she was going to say. Because that's what you are. I think any guy in the world would be lucky to match with you, Miss White. Jacqueline softens a little and has tears in her eyes. The sad thing is, you might be the only person I know who actually believes that. That's not true, Miss White. Look at Buckley. You guys get along like Ghostbusters now. I have so many traumatic memories from my divorce. I guess I went crazy trying to prevent myself from going through that again. So this whole day was you trying to escape your emotional brain box? Despite your use of what I assume is a hillbilly term, <laughs> I think you're right. I did that today too. I found an old note from Dong this morning and I just... Uh, are you really just going to talk about yourself right now? Because I'm pretty sure I'm the one who's just got catfished. Wait. <laughs> There's something that's both a cat and a fish? But cats eat fish. <laughs> Nature's hilarious. <laughs> uh, sorry, go on. I think somewhere deep down, I knew it was you. At least it explains why Reginald kept saying jeepers. Titus was right. I am the only one who says that. I think, I think I'm really upset because I didn't want my relationship with Russ to be over. I thought I could get past it so quickly, but it turns out I don't want to get past it. Maybe you could talk to him. Are you kidding? We had a huge fight. You can't bounce back from that. Unless you were fighting on a trampoline, but I know you weren't. Just when I finally understood how to love someone and put his needs ahead of my own, he leaves me. Jeepers, that is bad timing. I mean, what's the point of learning to be selfless if I don't get anything out of it? They pull up to Jacqueline's curb. I don't want to go home to this empty apartment. Lucky for you, I have this new kid's bop CD. I can pop this baby in, and their version of Rihanna's work is- Jacqueline slaps the CD out of her hand impulsively. I was so focused on destroying Julian's wedding this morning. Why would I even care? Because you probably have a ginormous Julian brain box. Just like I have a ginormous kidnapping slash bunker brain box. And apparently, a giant dong brain box too. Well, if you figure out how to get rid of your emotional brain boxes, let me know. Mine are ruining my life. There is a knock on the window. It's Russ. Jacqueline looks up and sees him. Russ, what are you doing here? Russ motions Jacqueline to roll down the window, which she does. I'm here to see you. Is this a bad time or something? It's just, we've broken up. Russ looks confused and then starts laughing. Hey, stop laughing at me right now! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just... Is this because of the fight this morning? Jacqueline nods. Jacqueline, that wasn't a breakup. It wasn't? No, I would never break up with you just because we had a fight. Couples argue all the time. Really? Whenever I argued with Julian, I got sent to the panic room. Jacqueline, get out of the car. She steps out of the car and closes the door. Russ pulls her close. I'm not Julian. I care about your opinion. When we have problems, we talk through them. Then why did you storm out this morning? I just really hate being late to work. Oh, so this isn't over? Far from it. Well, in that case, let's talk about this morning. Yeah, can we agree that wanting to destroy Julian's wedding is a crazy thing to do? Well, can we also agree that you should be more supportive of me? Not when it comes to your ex-husband. They continue to argue as Kimmy drives off, sharing her wink with Jacqueline in the rearview mirror. Cut to interior Kimmy's apartment, night. Kimmy enters to find Titus and Mikey asleep and cuddling on the couch. The credits to Splash playing on mute on the TV. Kimmy walks over to her one box of clutter and kneels down. She takes Dong's note out of her pocket, gives it one last look, then folds it up and puts it back in the box. She takes the box, puts it on the top shelf of her closet, and closes the door with a satisfied look. A rat runs past her, squeaking. The end. During the credits, we listen to the kids' bop version of Rihanna's work. End of Act 2.